Cry out with joy to the Lord, all the earth. O oh, sing to the glory of his name. O oh, render him glorious praise. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. You're very welcome to Mass today on the third Sunday of Easter. As we prepare to celebrate the mystery of Christ's love, let us acknowledge our failures and ask the Lord for pardon and strength. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, Ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. May your people exult forever, O Lord, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glorious glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to people, You are Israelites, and it is the God to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our ancestors, who has glorified his servant Jesus, the same Jesus you handed over and then disowned in the presence of Pilate after Pilate had decided to release him. It was you who accused the Holy One, the Just One. You who demanded the reprieve of a murderer while you killed the Prince of Life. God, however, raised him from the dead, and to that fact we are witnesses. Now, brothers, that neither you nor your deeds have any idea what you were doing. This was the way God carried out what he had foretold, when he said to all the prophets that his Christ would suffer. Now, you must repent and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. The Word of the Lord. Lift up the light of your face on us, O Lord. When I call of answering you, O God of justice, from anguish you release me, have mercy and hear me. It is the Lord who grants favours to those whom he loves. The Lord hears me whenever I call him. What can bring us happiness, men, he said? Lift up the light of your face on us, O Lord. I will lie down in peace and sleep comes at once, for you alone, Lord, make me dwell in safety. A reading from the first letter of St. John. I am writing this, my children, to stop your sinning. But if anyone should sin, we have our advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, who is just. 
He is the sacrifice that takes our sins away, and not only ours, but the whole world's. We can be sure that we know God only by keeping his commandments. Anyone who says, I know him, and does not keep his commandments is a liar, refusing to admit the truth. But when anyone does obey what he has said, God's love comes to perfection in him. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Lord Jesus, explain the scriptures to us. Make our hearts burn within us as you talk to us. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The disciples told their story of what had happened on the road and how they had recognized Jesus at the breaking of bread. They were still talking about this when Jesus himself stood among them and he said to them, Peace be with you. In a state of alarm and fright, they thought they were seeing a ghost. But he said, why are you so agitated, and why are these doubts rising in your hearts? Look at my hands and feet. Yes, it is I indeed. Touch me and see for yourselves. A ghost has no flesh and bones, as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. Their joy was so great that they could not believe it, and they stood there dumbfounded. So he said to them, Have you anything to eat? And they offered him a piece of grilled fish, which he took and ate before their very eyes. Then he said to them, This is what I meant when I said, while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the Law of Moses, in the Prophets, and in the Psalms has to be fulfilled. He then opened their minds to understand the Scriptures, and he said to them, So you see how it is written that the Christ would suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that in his name repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses to this. The Gospel of the Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite heart. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church. And as you have given her cause for such great gladness, 
Grant also that the gifts we bring may bring fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and the integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and he gave it to the disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Ralph our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Let us pray with confidence to God our Father in the words that Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The Christ had to suffer and on the third day rise from the dead. In his name, repentance and remission of sins must be preached to all nations. Alleluia. Since I left out the homily earlier, this is it. An old woman was going through a time of great doubt about the existence of God. 
In desperation, she went to the priest for help. She expected some convincing arguments to prove to her beyond all doubt that Jesus came back from the dead, but she was very surprised that the priest did not take this line at all. His advice was very simple. He told her to go out and to begin to do specific acts of love for people in her life and she would begin to see things differently. She followed his advice and in no town, time at all the doubts about God evaporated. The resurrection of Jesus is an event which no one witnessed. No one saw what actually took place. All they were confronted with was an empty tomb. But far more important are those post-resurrection appearances of Jesus to various individuals like Mary Magdalene and the Apostles, people who held him dear. You will notice that Jesus never appeared to Herod or Annas or Pilate or the high priest who wanted to do away with him. He once told them that they had no love of God in them. In the same way, Jesus didn't come down from the cross when his enemies mockingly challenged him to save himself. A personal faith in the resurrection of Jesus could take time, but I think it has to be woven into the fabric of our lives. That was the priest's advice to the woman struggling to believe. We have to live the gospel of love before the resurrection comes to life for us. St. John says, anyone who says, I know him and does not live the gospel is a liar. We could compare it to things in our lives already. For instance, we will never know how to swim by merely reading a book of instructions. We have to actually get into the water. We will never learn how to ride a bike without falling off it a few times. I will never witness to the resurrection unless my intentions in my ordinary everyday life are motivated by love. We learn to love by loving others, not reading books about it. And that's precisely what Jesus asks us to do. Saint Mother Teresa of Calcutta said that the greatest hunger in the world is not for food, but for love. And now if we can go some way in satisfying that hunger in the world, then our doubts about the resurrection will begin to dissolve, and our doubts about the existence of God will also disappear. We become resurrection people and we help other people to rise from their sins and rise from the death of their sins. But I think it has to be the bed and bread and butter of everyday life. That's why I'm always a bit dubious about ch people chasing after extraordinary signs and wonders in their religion in order to prop up their faith. Jesus said, it's a faithless generation that asks for a sign. Even in today's gospel, Jesus, after coming back from the dead, wanted to appear as normal as possible by eating grilled fish before their very eyes. After that, he showed them his wounds, thereby demonstrating that he was a real flesh and blood person and not a figment of their imagination. So, in our daily round, let us be the feet, the hands, the eyes, the ears of Jesus, bringing his love and the power of his resurrection to those open to receive it. We then become Easter people, proud to be at the service of our risen Lord. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries 
may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.